Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode here at Go Rails. I'm Colin, coming to you from the warm, sandy beaches of Canada. I have with me today my good buddy, Kent. Hey, Colin. Yeah, this is Kent from small town Canada. Amazing. I love it. Yeah, population is minimal there, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Kent and I just wanted to uh, come together and make a quick video here uh, displaying some things we've been working on and things we found recently um, and do a little bit of code refactor. So Kent and I over the last week have been working on the Rails Hackathon site, getting it ready for a new event that we're running uh, in July. Kent, do you have any words you'd like to share about said event? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can sign up now. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, selling out like Rails World. We do keep it open right to the end. It could be a max and unlimited amount of teams. So there's no limit. Yeah, plenty, plenty of seating available at the venue. Uh, yeah. Couches, desk, you know, all desks, office chairs, uh, basically all the all the amenities that you have at your home. We have here for this event as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sign up for the hackathon, the dates for the next event are July 28th and 30th, 2023. You can sign up. Uh, sign up is open now. You can sign up at railshackathon.com. Uh, also, the code that runs this app, it's open source. So if you find any bugs or issues, you can come over uh, to the repository uh, for this application and, you know, feel free to fix the code, open a pull request. We'll check it out and maybe you can get a contribution into it. So yeah. with that out of the way, I think, uh, Kent, I think it's time we can hop over and look at some code and uh, maybe take a look at refactoring a bit of it. What do you say? Sounds good. Uh, so, Kent, the code I was thinking about, uh, we can maybe take a look at and refactor uh, is the code that's in these four methods here. Yeah. Uh, now, for the viewers at home, uh, these methods are methods uh, that are written in uh, an event class. Um, that's what we use to make all the hackathon events, right? Uh, if we hop over into our Rails console here, and I'll just say event equals event dot first. Let's grab an event, and then if we look at that event, uh, we can see that it has attributes for start time and end time. Uh, and these are the attributes that these methods uh, use to, do, to perform some calculations. Um, as you can see here, to check and see if the event is active, if it's an event in the future, if the event is started, if it's ended. Now, uh, I know I've written code like this many times in dealing with, you know, time and daytime objects to do comparisons to see if these, whether there be events or any other thing, has is in the past, in the future, right now. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people at home have written code like this. Kent, have you ever seen or written code like this yourself? Yes, and I always have to think a couple times what greater than and less than means with respect to time. Every time. It's it's right. slightly confusing, right? And fairly awkward. Yeah, it definitely for me, much like you, it causes me to have to pause and really, you know, say it out loud many times to myself and think through what I'm really comparing here. It's not really the the best way to do this. You know, it works, but maybe I think maybe there's something we could change here. As they say in the old television commercials. There's got to be a better way. And you know what, Kent? Just like in those old television commercials, there is a better way. The better way is that we can actually use some nice helper methods uh, provided from active support oh. to make these comparisons read a little bit better to us as the programmers and the people that have to come back to this code later on. Right. So let's look at this active method, for example. So we're saying we're trying to see if the end time of an event is greater than the current time. So that would mean uh, time as it stands right now in the current time uh, or the current moment. If something is in the future, that number is going to be larger than whatever the current number is. Right. So that's why we're doing this greater than comparison here. But we can use uh, a method from active support, as I was just mentioning, called after. So we can just say dot after question mark. It's a predicate method. And this is going to be the exact same result as doing as using the, the greater than comparison uh, that we were using before. And Kent, how do you feel about this versus what we uh, where we're coming, where we came from? That is definitely better. Much easier to understand. However, I wonder, is there more? You know, Kent, I think there is more. Um, 
Before we get to more, though, let's let's uh, why don't we go through all of these four methods here and we'll do the proper conversions, because not only uh, is there an after, but yes, like you were alluding to, there is more. There's also a before method. Right. So in future, for example, we're looking at is the current time less than the start time? So that would mean what do you think, Kent? Probably before. Before is the answer. So here we can just change. We can drop that lesson altogether and we can just call it dot before question mark. And right. now we have the exact same uh, comparison or check that we were doing previously, but in a much more readable format. Continuing on, uh, let's go ahead and do the rest of these, right? So started is the current time greater than the start time. Uh, I believe what we are trying to say here is, again, is the uh, current time uh, after the start time. Would you agree with that assumption? Uh, after I think about it for a sec, uh, yes. I still have to think Perfect. about it. <laughs> it's still slightly confusing, right? Uh, but let's finish this uh, this little bit out here. So this one is the current time greater than the end time. So is it after the end time? So we'll just go ahead and drop off that comparison there and just simply call after. This is a nice change from where we were at. Ken, would you agree? Oh, yes. Still twinge confusing. If there was it's just still, still mildly like confusing. Because we're talking about the future and the past. Exactly. So... It makes you wonder if there is yet even a better way, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I agree. And the answer is a resounding yes again. Okay, so before we dig into where we can go next and how we can make this even better, uh, just so that you know where uh, you can find those after and before methods, they are defined in this uh, module in Rails, uh, the date and time calculations module. And looking in here in the API docs, there's a whole slew of methods um, that you have at your uh, disposal to, you know, write some more human readable codes to do these kinds of uh, calculations. So be sure to check out this section in the API docs and uh, check out some more of these methods in detail. So all these methods we defined on the event class so that in our code uh, where we want to, you know, get these, uh, use these methods. We don't have to say event.start time here. You know, for example, basically say time.current.before event.start time. We just want to know is it in the future or not, right? We don't want to have to do these calculations all over our code. So that's why we've defined these methods here. Um, but an interesting note is if we look at what type of objects we're dealing with here with the start time and end time attributes of our event model, it uh, will actually unlock the, you know, this is the key to unlocking the knowledge, if you will, about how we can make this code even uh, better. So back over in our console with the event that we have loaded up here, if I say event.starttime.class, we'll see that this is an act uh, actually an active support time with zone object. Okay, so knowing this, if we hop over to the API docs and we pull up the docs for this class, we will see uh, more methods that we have at our disposal to use with this object. So let's jump over there now. Can't pack your bags, let's go. Okay, so over in the API docs for the active support time with zone class, if we scroll down through this list or through this page and we get to the list of methods here, uh, we'll actually start to see some interesting ones here. There's a future predicate method. And if we keep going, there's a past predicate method, for example. So knowing this now, uh, let's recall uh, the code that we just did in our console here. But instead of calling class, let's say, uh, let's ask if this start time of this event is in the future. So we can simply just say future here as a predicate method. And we'll get false because uh, this start time for this event is Friday, September 16th, 2022. So this is last year. So this seems to be working nicely for us. So what does that mean for our code back in our event model? If we pop over there, that means we no longer have to do a check like this, for example. Instead, what we can do is we can just call the start time method, right, on the event object, and then say future right here, right? Mm -hmm. So then we can just get rid of this method, uh, that line of code altogether, 
and just have this. Ken, how do you feel about this code now? This is my new favorite. This is my new favorite too. <laughs> for our ended, for example, we can do a similar thing. Instead of having the code that we have here, we could simply call the end time right there, end time attribute, uh, and then say past question mark, right? So this will give us the exact, exact same result as that longer line of code that was still mildly confusing above and just simply have, have this code here. Yes, much better. Excellent. Uh, look, what else can we do here for started? So currently we're checking to see if the current time is after the start time. I have to sneeze. <laughs> okay, we'll fix that in post. So here we can instead say, is the start time in the past? So if the start time's in the past, that means this event has started, right? Alternatively, or at the opposite end of the spectrum, as we did a moment ago, ended, we check and see if the end time is in the past, meaning that the event ended. So using these two, uh, we could create a method that, you know, would say, like, is the event currently going on right now? We could leverage these to build build up another method. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's round out this with looking at our active method here. So end time after the current time. So... Kent, how do you think we would write this? Uh, put this one in the past. Uh, put this one in the future. Just edit in the one that's right. <laughs> so the answer is yes. <laughs> what we want to do here is, uh, so right now we're checking is the end time after the current time. So that implies that the end time is in the future. So here we could just say end time dot future like this. And now we've gotten rid of all of that comparison code. And we just have simple methods that we call on our active support time with zone objects to see if uh, if these events or times are in the past, future, mm -hmm. nice and clean. Yep. Let's go ahead. Now that we have all these methods written, let's go ahead and reload our console here. Okay. I'm going to clear it out. And we grabbed the first event previously. I'm going to grab the last event now. Right. So I'm going to say event now equals event dot last. So we're going to grab this last event out of our database, right? So there we've gotten, we did our database read. We have this event from the database. It is this object, this event object has now been instantiated in memory, right? It is now a Ruby object. And now we can work with that event object in memory and we can use these attributes of that event object to call additional methods on, right? So when we do the read, start time and end times as we saw if we look at event dot uh, start time for example and we call a class on that that has been you know instantiated as a active support time with zone object right so now when we go to call uh, in our code how we're doing start time dot future question mark we're not doing any additional database reads there right we're working with the object that we have right now in memory uh, to to get you know results from calling methods on that object. So now with our new code, with this event, for example, so right now, before we run any code, let's let's do a quick check between us uh, and align the minds, if you will. <laughs> so right now, this event has a start time of Friday, July uh, 28th, 2023, which is the hackathon event that's coming up next month. Y'all should sign up. So if we were to call event.future, on uh, or call our future predicate method on this event, we should see true. So if we wrote everything properly, uh, and let's hope that we did, otherwise we'll have to implore some movie magic here. Okay. True. This event is in the future. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that's a nice High little five. refactoring. High five, Kent. <laughs> so with this all said and done, now uh, hopefully. You've seen um, some new things that you have at your disposal when working with these objects in your own Rails apps. Um, and also, don't forget to sign up uh, for the Hackathon event if you're interested. Again, the date's right there, July 28th, 30th, or maybe it goes this way. Uh, 2023, so next month, railshackathon.com. And until then, uh, we will see you in the next episode. Signing off from the warm, sandy beaches of Canada, I'm Colin. I'm Kent from the small town Canada. And we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Just got to slap the middle part.
Yeah, I think I need to go over a little more. High five, Kent. Nice job. <laughs> we'll go close to the camera, maybe. Oh. Oh, there we go. So try and go like. Okay. Right, practice a little. Hold on. Yeah, I gotta go close too. That's too close. Where's your hand? Hold your hand up again. Going straight up like that. That's that's pretty good. Right about there. Okay, right over my mouse. Well, Kent, are right, you ready? Let's try one. Sure. Kent, I think this is a job well done and a great uh ah. <laughs> Kent, uh, I think this is a job well done and I think uh, a good refactoring for us going forward. So high fives.